means we can start wearing our knits. It also means it's Vlogtober. Um, it's been hard for me to film a sit down, talk at the camera style podcast for a bit. So I have been filming little snippets of my nitty life here and there. And yeah, I'm going to give Vlogtober a try. I'm not going to be uploading a video every day by any means, but probably about once a week, which is what a lot of knitting podcasters do. Props to you, man. Ooh, a lot of work goes into filming a knitting podcast. I'm so impressed that some people have very regular upload schedules, but I digress. So I'm going to insert some footage here from actually the summer when Eric and I went on a trip to San Diego. It was really fun and we actually hit up a few yarn stores, but probably one of my favorite moments of the whole trip was we went to this rooftop bar on the Natural History Museum. Sorry, my cat is trying to walk on my laptop. To him, it is just a very expensive heated cat bed. I love you, Sebastian, but we can't do this right now. Anyway, uh, this summer we went to San Diego. It was great. We knit on top of a rooftop while we were having drinks at a rooftop bar. It was great. Eric also tried on a sock that he was knitting. I love my husband so much. Oh, I'm enjoying Golden State Cider Brute. Um, it's really good. Highly recommend it. All right, what else am I going to put in here? Oh, just some like, sometimes I picked up the camera and talked through projects that I was working on. Um, I finished the prayer shawl, which was the first brioche project I was working on. Okay, um, so I'm still working on my first brioche project. This is the frozen frost shawl by Happy Knitter. Um, it's a free pattern and she provides a video and written instructions. And this is my first brioche project. Not entirely true. This is my second attempt at brioche. My first was the Harlow hat, a design by Andrew Mowry. And I really struggled to get gauge and yeah, it was honestly the most frustrating project that I have ever done. So, but I still wanted to give brioche a go, and hence this project. Uh, the yarns I'm knitting it out of, it's nothing fancy. And that's intentional because with the Harlow hat, I was knitting it out of some really nice plucky yarn and the spin cycle yarn that is used in the pattern and Oh, I just I put a lot of pressure on myself for that project and with this one I'm knitting it out of some like Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca and another wool acrylic blend uh, Ella Ray it's gonna focus um, and it's been it's really fun I wouldn't normally knit with those colors in that combination but here let me see if I can fold this out. You can see my very, very messy apartment right now. It's an indication of just how busy things are at the moment. So this is one side. I'm knitting this. If you didn't see the last episode, um, as a part of a prayer shawl knitting group that I'm a part of. This is the back side. One side, the, um, 
pattern is from Revisiblon because they're slightly different weights of yarn that I'm using. I actually quite like the effect. I think I'm going to do one more repeat and bind off and really stretch it, uh, block it pretty aggressively width-wise. So yeah, this is what I've been working on recently. Their mistakes don't look too closely. Having fun with it. So yeah, I'm having fun with that project and now I want to knit. I think um, I really love the texture of brioche and I, I think I'd like to knit one that's not two color, just one color. I just love the texture. A nice big squishy shawl for winter time because uh, it's September 12th today. I'm, well, I can wear this sweater in the summer too because it's pretty light, but um, it's like dipping into the 70s here in Sacramento today. Very, very exciting. Sweater weather is upon us. Okay, it's all, it's all for now. And some of my frustrations with the lady slipper that I knit, by no fault of the pattern, uh, I just used a silly cast or a bind off technique around the neckline and it looks a little messy. So I'm gonna have to frog part of that. Hmm. So first off I have the lady slipper and you can't tell it right now, but this is a sweater style like t-shirt wrap top. Uh, this end has ties that are done with an I-cord that wrap around your waist and there's this gorgeous lace edging that has some tubular stuff going on here where you insert a ribbon. I think I'm actually going to use a belt here. Um, I knit this out of, if you haven't watched past week's Parade. It's a yarn produced by Amirisu. I picked it up. Oh, oh hi Sebastian. <sighs> always, always. Knitting is not complete without a cat walking all over it. Um, this is a wool, silk, uh, cotton, linen blend. It has the highest percentage of wool and then lower percentages of those other fibers. But it is just a dream to knit with. Just gorgeous. Um, I can't wait to wear this, but, okay, where I'm at, there's some issues with the neckline. Do you see this pooling here? I really stupidly did a stretchy bind off when you're supposed to, ooh, what was that, ooh, uh, bind off around the neckline, and it created this bunching, and I don't, uh, it's such a beautiful, delicate sweater. I know I would probably be the only one who noticed it. I also don't know how much I love this very simple neckline. I might want to embellish it somehow. So I'm just trying to get the strength and fortitude to rip back right now. Very near FO. Hey, checking in. It's now Tuesday. Uh, over the weekend I went to a super fun wedding where I did not bring my knitting, but definitely should have. Uh, hung out a lot with my family and knit on a new pair of socks that I started working on, which I don't have right here with me, but I'll show you that in a second. Um, and I also helped my friend learn how to knit socks. She's a crocheter, but always sees me knitting on socks and it's going through like the worst breakup. So socks are learning how to knit something new that I think is a great thing to throw yourself into when you're going through stuff. I think pretty much cures everything. Okay, so I have another work in progress that I want to show you. Guys, I bit the bullet. I cast on a Tenya. 
This thing just flies off the needles. Uh, oh, and the camera, I actually like how this yarn's knitting up more, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna dye it anyway, um, especially because up here it started pooling in a really unfortunate way. Yeah. So this is uh, the Tenya, designed by Caitlin Hunter. I was on the fence about it because I'm too cool for school and don't like knitting things everyone else is knitting. But also really because it has drop sleeves, and drop sleeves aren't the most flattering on me. The way it's described as these universally flattering things, but I need some structure. I kind of have broader shoulders also, and it just kind of, it just kind of broadens them even more. I don't know, I still haven't entirely figured it out. Do drop shoulders look good on you? If not, why? Like, what's going on with drop shoulders is not looking good on me? Um, the yarn I'm knitting it with is a wool, it's a wool silk blend by, I don't know how you pronounce it, like, Ar Arcania? I just heard it pronounced on the Wet Coast Wools podcast and made a mental note, but I forgot it already. If you haven't checked out the West Coast Wolves podcast, I really, it's fun. They make good stuff. Uh, yeah, so I don't like how contrasting this, these colors are in the skein. I thought it was gorgeous, but I just don't like how it's knitting up. So pretty sure I'm going to dye it with, um, like, purple plum leaf. I learned how to use natural dyes when I took a natural dyeing class at A Verb for Keeping Warm in Oakland about this time last year, and I think I'm going to give it a try. I know that some of the color's still going to show through, but I, I think it'll look good, like make it look more like variegated. I'm excited. It's fun. Right now it's like all stocking out in the round, which is fine. Okay, I also just soaked my Frozen Forest shawl. Hi, Sebastian. <laughs> Please don't pee on my blocking shawl. Yeah, I just have it stretched out on the couch for right now, and I have this uh, towel collecting excess water that pops up, but yeah, I really love how this turned out. Again, color is not me. It's going to be uh, a gift given to someone in need. Yeah. Frozen forest. I, I got out my, uh, my blocking mats to to block it out, but the couch was just easier. I might eventually move it because Sebastian just cannot be trusted. Anything that if he, if he starts sitting close to it, it means he's thinking about being on it. That's right. Okay. Sorry, I have the window open. If it's like loud and noisy. Um, the last thing that I'm working on is a sock, a surprise sock, but it's not a surprise sock because I already hadn't tried on. Uh, for Eric, I'm knitting this in Noro Silk Garden Sock, I'm pretty sure is what it's called. I won this at a Noro trunk show. And yeah, I really, really like how this is knitting up. I'm doing a, I've come up with this, a three by one ribbing throughout, and I did a twisted rib for the cuff. I think I'm gonna do an afterthought heel on it. I think that fit is what Eric prefers. He is reaching the end of his second sock. Eric's gonna have in a pair of socks soon, so I'm pretty impressed. He uh, isn't knitting them so fast so that he doesn't need me. 
to have known some socks too. I'm also going to insert a little bit of footage from Vogue Knitting Live, which I did end up going to, and I'm so happy that I did. It exceeded any of my expectations. Um, Vogue Knitting Live was very different from Stitches. It was far more curated of a selection in the marketplace, and I was I had a really hard time picking out cl classes to take because there were just so many all-stars there. And talking to some more seasoned knitters, I'm still relatively new to this scene. Apparently that is what Vogue Knitting Live is like. It brings really stellar teachers to up to bat. I don't know. Sports analogies. Not, not my thing. Um, I took a three-hour class on swatching, taught by Clara Parks. It was amazing. It was life-changing. Um, I didn't realize until I took the class that I actually have, <laughs> with all things, that's why I picked up knitting, I have a lot of anxiety around swatching. And in the class she presented, we looked at swatching through three different lenses, essentially. We learned many technical aspects to swatching. Uh, all right, we gotta change this. Um, we discussed many of the technical aspects of swatching to get a useful swatch for gauge for knitting sweaters. We also talked about swatching as a way to get to know different materials and experience fiber and the relationship between the fiber and your hands and the needles and different uh, materials that needles are made out of at a specific moment in time because while it's important to swatch to you know find out your gauge it's a reflection of a moment in time your gauge may be different at a different moment. I know I've experienced that uh, in times where I've been very stressed, particularly when I knit on planes. I have horrible plane anxiety and my stitches get very, very tight. That was interesting. But finally, she presented swatching as, she called it the zen of swatching. Swatching almost as meditation. And that was so profound to me. And I've actually incorporated it into my morning meditation practice. So I have been swatching different yarns in the morning. And it's wonderful because sometimes I will knit in the morning, but when it's for a project, there is an end goal in mind. And with swatching, it, it, it's easier to be present because there isn't necessarily any end destination for your knitting. Yeah. I've been really enjoying it. And it's easy because when I was at Vogue Knitting, I got some new yarns that are really lovely to swatch with. So let's transition into, I, I don't have a lot of acquisitions, but just, just a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. So, well, here's one of my swatches. Ah, it's my first time knitting with woolen spun yarn. It's from this company that I don't know how to pronounce the name of, so I'm going to insert it. It's Lambswool from Scotland. And I was nervous because knitting with it before blocking, it was very scratchy. I thought, oh no, maybe I've made a mistake. I've heard that this gets softer, but how can this possibly get soft enough to wear? It does! Blocking is magic! And it's so light and lofty. Oh, oh, look at that! I'm in love. So, I got four skeins of this thinking that I was going to make a weekender, but I don't actually think that sweater would be flattering on me. I don't think it exactly has a drop sleeve, but it has patterning that goes down the sleeve. And I already have somewhat broad shoulders. I don't need anything drawing more attention 
to my shoulders. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to knit something else. I'm thinking of knitting a modified Leslie, which was a Hannah Fettig pattern. I don't know. We'll see. Right now, I'm just enjoying the knitting with this this woolen spun yarn and swatching. I also picked up some mohair from Earl Grey Fibers. It's lovely. I got two skeins of it. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. Um, I love the idea behind the Elton cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. Again, drop sleeves. Why is it such a trend right now? So, we'll see. Okay, I have some finished objects. Well, I'll just show off another, actually. Okay, scratch that. One more acquisition. So, uh, I think her name's Sarah of Cedar Knits. I follow her on Instagram, and she was having a D stash and I've been looking for some Quince & Co owl yarn for a bit in the tawny colorway and she just happened to post a sweaters quantity worth of this exact yarn in the exact colorway I was looking for. So I got some. This will also be a sweater. And here's my swatch. I haven't blocked this one yet, though. Okay. Uh, so, on the bed right now, I have my Tenya. I'll put in a picture of me wearing it. It's so flattering. I didn't pick up the sleeves and knit them. Instead, I just inserted a ribbing. Oh, I gotta leave in those ends. I just added, like, a ribbing edge. And I really love how it fits. I hate how this yarn pooled. I had a feeling I would have to dye it anyway because I want the lace to stand out a little more. So, uh, yesterday I passed the perfect tree for dye material. Okay, backing up. I have wanted to dye this with purple leaf, purple plum, Purple leaf plum tree? Words! Why can't I talk? I've only had a sip of this cider. Ay -ay 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 -ay. <clears throat> okay, that tree with the really cool purple leaves. You can use it to dye stuff purple. I have been looking for the right tree though. Just needed to feel right. And I found one by a cemetery where I have ancestors buried and that just felt cosmically perfect. I have my front seat of my car full of leaves right now. Gonna wash them, cut them up, and dye this bad boy. It's gonna be fun. Uh, what else? I had my knit night last night, and more people are coming, which is really exciting, but we're outgrowing our spot at Old Soul. There's another spot outside. They have a gorgeous patio too, but the spot would be around a fire pit. And something about fire and knitting makes me scared for the yarn. I don't know. What do you think? It's not like a fire pit that the chairs are far away from. The chairs and the table, the, the fire pit is like on the table. So one wrong move and your skein of mohair is gone. It's no good. Wow, this this is all over the place. Look, I finished <laughs> I finished these socks. This yarn is I picked up in Spain, self striping. It was 150 gram uh, ball that I added. Contrasting cuff, and this is that um dividing yarn in a ball of 
like Regia, Arnie and Carlos, probably saying all that wrong, but you know the yellow yarn that divides the self-striping? That's what that is. Add it in for the heel. Uh, Eric doesn't know it, but these, this is his birthday present. I don't think he's going to watch this, so we're fine. Uh, <laughs> any other knitting stuff I can yell at you about? Oh yeah, I wish I... <laughs> this is like me last night. The knitting group is bigger and I got really excited and I'm normally a... not necessarily quiet, but collected. I like to consider my thoughts before verbalizing them. Uh, but when it comes to knitting, I just get really excited and act like a little kid and blurt everything out. And probably act like a fool last night. Just so excited for new knitting friends. I was only in a hard place with all my knitting projects because I'd finished those socks, but I just cast on these. Self-striping, Valkyrie fiber, contrasting cuff with story storyteller yarns. Loving it. Back on vanilla socks on my 9-inch circulars. I love this kind of knitting for when I'm reading textbooks uh, or like just reading in general. It actually helps me focus to have like something going on with my hands. Okay, I think that's it. This weekend is Lambtown in Dixon. I'm going for the first time. I'm so excited. Will you be at Lambtown? I don't know if this will be up in time for you to tell me if you're going to be at Lambtown, but this is really close. Alright, thanks for bearing with me with my first Vlogtober. Gonna get more polished as time goes on. Uh, happy knitting, and I'll check in with you later. Bye-bye.